Whee! Hey Grains, welcome to episode 4 of turning YouTubers into monstrous creatures! Raper! Wow, you're rude. In this episode, we celebrate different kinds of YouTubers by making them into a sculpture. In the past, we've done Mariah Elizabeth, Simply Nailogical, and Sophia Nygaard. As you can see from today's title, we will be going at SS Sniper Wolf, also known as Leah. For those of you who don't know, why, why'd you have to smack me? Are you done? Potty mouth this bird. For those of you who don't know, Sniper Wolf is a huge creator here on YouTube with over 18 million subscribers. In the past, she was predominantly a gaming channel, but recently her channel focuses more on reactions and testing out different kinds of hacks. Verb agrees. And Verb is gone. And Verb agrees more. And Verb is back. Oh! That's a hit! And it's a hit and run. What has my life become now, being smacked by burbs? One of the many things I love about Sniper Wolf is that she reminds me a lot of my sister Sika, who as many of you grains might know, is a wild card on my channel. She loves to defy me. And much like my sister, Sniper Wolf's sass level is... Mm, quite up there. And sometimes her sense of humor is so dry that you can definitely mess out on the jokes. So you have to just know that there's a joke. Do you grains remember the tea bag at the beginning of the video? Yeah, I'm aware there's drama. But in the wise words of Sniper Wolf, the YouTubers that you see online are extremely different in real life than they are online. I'll see somebody online and then I'll meet them in real life and they're absolutely nothing like they are in videos. So with that part said, I'll leave it at that. And so now the big question is, what creature base will Sniper Wolf be? Because she likes to laugh and have this kind of dry humor, should her base be a hyena? No. She absolutely loves her dogs. Should her base be a Pomeranian? No. So Jackie, what will Sniper Wolf's base B. I'm glad you asked. For this creature, we're going to go pretty much with the name that she chose. Her username is Sniper Wolf. And so the monster for this sculpture will start with a wolf. And she does call her subscribers part of the wolf pack. And subscribe to the wolf pack. And make sure you subscribe to the wolf pack. Oh! I love you guys so Not to mention, when it comes to her own merch, she has a lot of different vibes with Wolf kind of the same theme. So I think it would be kind of wrong not to add that as our main focus. If you have a problem with that, you come over here and you fight. Come on! Don't fight me, I'm scared. By the way, for those of you new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, otherwise I will wave a sharp pointy thing at you. I also wanted to say a huge thank you because of all of you grains going and spamming previous YouTubers that I made them into sculptures and let them know what I did, every single YouTuber has so far seen their videos. And so because of that, please. I would love for you grains to go to Sniper Wolf's latest video after watching this one and letting her know Nerdy Crafter turned you into a monster. It would mean the world to me. I'm very aware that you grains also asked for Markiplier and Delightful in addition to Sniper Wolf, but if you have more recommendations, leave them in the comment section below. And now to start our sculpture, the first thing we're going to do as always is prepare our base. And usually I like to start by painting the base depending on the color that I think the theme will be. And I figured brown for an earthy tone. And then I took my sharp pointy thing and made some scratches and scruffs right on there, added my liquid Sculpey, and prepared the surface for grass. One of the longest parts about making any type of sculpture is making the grass texture, which requires a very thin needle, and then the swirly swirlies of the texture. In case you're wondering, this is called Palmer clay. Think of it as Play-Doh, but once we bake it, it's permanent. As much as I'd love to tell you that there's a easier and faster way to make grass, there really isn't. You just gotta keep twirling and twirling and twirling. Time for my favorite part, character design. 
of my favorite character design creatures have these skull faces. Ever since I was a little green, I was very fascinated by these kinds of creatures. And as you can see, this seahorse sculpture from my book also has that same aesthetic. And also one of my sculptures, Elias Ainsworth from Ancient Magus Bride, sports the same design. Yes, I did make that sculpture, link down below. And in the story of Ancient Magus Bride, the main character, Ilias, has a skull-like face. And the biggest tragedy, tra tra tragedy, English, enunciate. And the biggest tragedy in this whole anime is that he is very much so misunderstood. So I feel that's something a lot of YouTubers might feel that way as well. And even though Sniper Wolf has this outgoing type personality, Excuse me, what? Did you hear me? Woman, there is no wafer in my Kit Kat. When she has her videos where she does some vlogs, and even has discussions with her friends, you can definitely tell that she is a down-to-earth kind of person. I do have to be a little quiet because I thought I was by myself, but there are two people in here that have their blinds closed, so I want to try to be quiet. And so I feel like nothing less than a skull head would make the perfect start for our creature base. And in order to do our skull base, I'm going to be taking a glow-in-the-dark clay. I want this sculpture to have a really cool feature to it, and hey, what's cooler than glow-in-the-dark? I mean, there are many other cool things too, but glow in the dark is pretty cool too. Don't knock it down. Look at me! That's what I thought. In order to make the skull, it's pretty simple. We're going to make a chubby carrot, shape the front so that it's slightly slanted downwards, and make sure that you put your finger right in the middle, right on top. That's going to create our little indent right on top of the head. Now pinch the sides with your fingers. Take a tool, could be your pointy thing or anything flat like a popsicle stick, and push the bottom part of the mouth a little more in. We're at a point now where we absolutely need to make the eyes because we can't go any further and start building out the cheeks, well, the cheekbones and, and all that stuff. So I took my half dome cabochons and I've really recently started to fall in love with this berry color. Although technically I should be using red because sniper wolf. And when I think sniper, I think the red dot. But let's just, let's pretend. Actually, you know what? Eight hours later. I'm gonna go with berry anyways. Because I have plans to use red later on for a different piece, I don't want there to be too much red, so let's go with berry. But let's assume that we're using red because sniper. And so for the eyes, I still wanna keep it a very fantasy but dark type creature. So I'm just painting the whole thing in that berry color, which has a nice sheen to it. And the moment of truth we have. Ooh, that is beautiful. Exactly what I wanted. Yes. I want to be clear. When I'm saying it's pretty simple, what I actually mean is take your time. I am a very slow sculptor, so even a skull like this won't even take me 10 minutes. It will actually take me between an hour to two hours to put it together. So seriously, take your time. You can make really gorgeous pieces if you just slow down a bit. This part is a little too thin, so we're going to bulk it up by adding a little bit of clay. <laughs> absolutely adorable so far. I am really excited to continue this, but before we go on, we're going to put her in the oven for about 10 minutes just as a pre-bake. For those of you who play video games, think of it as saving your progress. And for those who want to say, oh, Jackie, this is a monster. How can it be cute? Shh. Stop. <laughs> I personally find the aesthetic of monsters absolutely gorgeous. So for me to turn YouTubers into a creature of themselves is probably the highest compliment my little brain can think of. 
And of course, before I put it in the oven, I'm going to put a piece of wire in the back so that it's easier to be able to integrate it into the whole body. A little longer than a few minutes later. Now that our head is fully baked, and I have to say I am absolutely in love with this. When it comes to the wolf body, there are different things that go through my mind. Let's get back to the book. One of the things that I really love are these very slim, delicate looking legs. I know it's a weird creature, but what are you gonna do? Of course I would get a book about monster sculptures. But in addition to the slim, delicate looking legs, in one of the videos that I was watching with Sniper Wolf in there, she was wearing a corset, which automatically reminded me of Ellen Jewett's sculptures, which have this very, very exaggeratedly slim torso and curves that are really defined. And the corset was black, so. We're going with a black body. Some of the hardest things when it comes to doing sculptures is knowing what pose you want it to be. The natural one would be kind of just standing like my initial sketch, but I think I'm going to go with a slanted head down and a body going up just so that we have a little bit more movement. So let's do that. And so the first thing we're going to do is prepare our neck. And since wire and clay don't stick to each other, I'm going to put a little bit of foil paper, a little bit of masking tape, and a little bit of liquid sculpey. You see where this is going? And now I can finally put my black clay around it. Sometimes when you don't know where to start, it's just better to start and bulk things up as you go. As you can see, I'm trying different positions on my base. And once I decided how I wanted it to be placed, I made a thin carrot out of black clay and then merged the neck piece to the body piece. What the heck is this? What? No. So obviously, this technique is way harder than it looks, which means this is no. And I have no idea. I have to think about it. This is way harder than I thought. I was like, today, I told myself, hey, I'm not going to spend 40 hours on a sculpture. That was wishful thinking. So I need to brainstorm this thing. <laughs> and so on my second attempt, it still didn't work. And then on my third attempt, I decided to slow down. Since the slim part kept drooping down because the clay wasn't holding itself, using a foil armature was probably the best idea. And then I took my time to wrap it with the black clay and smooth it as much as possible. This is probably the hardest piece I've ever had to put together. I, th I, I really think the simplicity of the look makes it feel like it's simple, but it's not. And just looking at it, sitting there, half, half me, half me, English, cooperate today. I don't, I don't need this right now. I think I'm going to just have to keep pushing forward and see what it looks like with the wired legs. If it really doesn't look like anything that I wanted with my sketch, I might actually have to scrap the entire day's worth of work and start over. But let's hope that doesn't get to that. So once the wires are into the legs and the thighs, it starts looking less sad because I was pretty sad looking at him like, I need to start over, but it's, it's starting to look pretty decent if I say so myself. I'm still not fully happy with the body shape, but I feel like I can modify this better once it's baked. I don't know why, I'm not sure if I can, but we have no choice but to try because at this point I am this close to giving up on this particular piece. Keeping with the theme of dainty and small, I put the paws in in the same way that Phoenix Chris Studios does, which is just kind of tiny mittens. And now that she's placed on the actual base and I put aluminum foil underneath the belly to make sure that she doesn't crumple down and that the joints don't go all wonky all over the place. I don't know what this is, but it's something now. <clears throat> I also put a piece of aluminum under one of the paws because I have intentions of putting something under there. I didn't think I would need to bake it so soon, but we have no choice at this point. Is it going to break? I don't know. Is she gonna fall apart? I said I don't know. So the only thing we have to do is put our hands together and pair <laughs> So the only thing we have to do is put our hands together and pray to the baking gods. Dear baking gods of evermore, please protect my piece from cracks, burns, and fallen limbs. And also, stop breaking my stuff! A few moments later. And now for the important answer, were the baking gods nice to us? And the answer is... Bruh. They broke my stuff! Even though I am pretty annoyed that she did fall apart in the oven, all the limbs are kind of intact, just the front ones seem a little off. 
I'm kind of relieved that the head didn't fall off and the neck stayed in place, which means we're still okay. Because the body is stable now, it's going to make it so much easier for me to be able to add on more details and to solidify parts that were weak. Because if I ever did ship it to Sniper Wolf, it would have broken this way. Better to know before. All right, let's do the fun part. Time for detail. And we can break these off even more. Eat. And so as I'm putting the fur behind the head, I want it to be kind of flowy and eerie at the same time. Remember, this sculpture, we're not going for cutesy, but we're rather going for a medieval because of the corset look. <laughs> hi, bird. <laughs> bird wants to say hi. <laughs> Are you done, bird? Because I have things to say too. The next part that needed fur was definitely the front part. And then in the back, I wanted there to be a mixture of fur as well as spines. And when it comes to the spine, I really wanted it to symbolize the part of her life and the part of her YouTube career where she kept on persevering regardless of what other people may have said. <laughs> All right, bird, this is it. I need, I need to do things now. run into another issue and the issue is the front leg does not want to stick which means we have to use absolute brute force so epoxy clay it is one of the hardest clays out there and it hardens pretty much like a rock so what i'm going to do is take these two parts smush them together and it's going to turn into a clay and i'm going to attach the front wire with it once that part's hardened then i can layer it with actual polymer clay and it should stay in place now So I'm going to save my progress and hope that putting all these aluminum foils around it should hopefully not break anything. The fur isn't touching anything, so yeah, fingers crossed. I know we should be praying to the baking goods, but they forsake us last time. A few moments later. I am super relieved. Not only did the baking gods not betray us this time, but the epoxy clay is so solid that I can hold it just from that one limb and it's holding on really well. The tail is looking good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is start bulking it up where it feels like it could use a little bit of mass to make it look even more epic. And here she is bulked up. All right, while well, my progress is saving for the fourth time, I want to talk about Sniper Wolf's love for her pups. She has three dogs, at least the ones I'm pretty sure I know about, Kaz, Lumpy, and Ash. And similar to me, she does have a specific breed that she really likes, which in her case are Pomeranians. She obviously treats her dogs really well and really babies them. Yeah, but you know me, you know me. A sculpture wouldn't be a sculpture unless somehow there was some kind of play on words. So since this is a medieval type sculpture, it wouldn't make sense to have cute and chibi type dogs on the sculpture itself. Now, Pomeranian, P -p Pomeranians. Wow. By the way, if you were wondering what my favorite breed of cat is, it's Burmese and it's both Splinter and Ramses and I love them so much. So the play on word that I'm going to be doing is Pomeranian. And since they're called Poms for short, in French, the word Pom means apple. So I'm going to be adding three apples in this environment, which would technically make sense since, you know, it's a sculpture that has a more serious vibe to it. So having three fallen apples in the environment doesn't necessarily mean that it's out of place. But for those of us who know, we know exactly what they represent. Three palms. Pum. And so quite simply, the apples is pretty much making a circle, lightly flattening the top, and then pinching the edges so they kind of stick out. We don't want it to be too flat. Then taking a pointy tool and making some of the markings. In case you're wondering, I am using translucent clay. Now to color it, I'm going to be taking some chalk pastels and dusting off some colors just to make it more interesting. You can definitely use colored clay and then use chalk pastels to give it more depth as well. Here's
here's a nifty trick that I learned on my own is that if you want to make small flexible parts like the stem go ahead and use eraser clay which behaves like clay you bake it but it's flexible so it won't break now that our apples are done I'm just gonna hang, hang on just wait I'm gonna put it over there gently hang on don't fall don't fall <laughs> oh my gosh now okay we're good and we're safe the next thing I want to make for this environment is a snake there are three big reasons that I wanted to include a snake in this environment which is going to be pretty much under one of the paws of the wolf so the first thing is her accomplishment of being on fear factor so sniper wolf and her friend were on fear factor and they had to escape some kind of cage in the water with snakes going a little bit of everywhere and I always find it really fun when mainstream media and youtubers kind of mix together the second symbol for this snake in her draw my life she had mentioned that one of her favorite games when she first started gaming was Metal Gear Solid and one of the characters name is you guessed it snake and the third symbol for the snake yes I am aware again that there are rumors and there are there was a lot of drama but the fact that sniper wolf was able to overcome these and again there wasn't any substantial proof to a lot of different things I don't want to get into it in the same way that the spines on the back are the coming back the crushing of the snake could also symbolize pretty much stomping on potential rumors or things that people may have tried to gain from those rumors again I'm not taking sides it's kind of like the drama I had with Sarah Beauty Corner but let's not talk about that in order to make the snake I actually followed a tutorial by Everson art which I'll leave in description box below This wasn't in the tutorial, but I figured this would probably be easier if you want to layer a couple of colors together and just smush. far I absolutely love this pose I know some of you might be thinking that you know the legs feel incomplete but this is the look I wanted I wanted an eerie fragile but very eerie look ah. and just I know bird everyone sees you everyone acknowledges you can I talk that wasn't very nice and he leaves proud of yourself you proud don't you dare don't you dare do a hit oh what and he smacked the side of my head. Let's see that again. He totally did. Happy? <laughs> You're such a weirdo bird. One of the other things I forgot to mention about the apples, not only are they pum for Pomeranian, French, French pun for my French grains, but also the color I gave them is for Fuji apples. The reason I went for Fuji apples is because she is a fan of video games and manga slash anime. Burp. Everybody saw that you smacked my head. Everyone just saw it. That is my life now. And she also visited Japan. And as I could see from her vlogs, she really enjoyed Japan. So that's also to commemorate her trip to Japan and her love of things Japanese and Japanese culture. Right, Burp? He agrees. So now we're going to put our hands together and pray to the baking gods because this is our last bake. Burp, I'm praying. Dear baking gods of evermore, please protect my piece from cracks, burns, and fallen limbs. And also, stop breaking my stuff! Later. We are on home stretch, baby! I know I don't usually say baby, but I mean it. You reigns on my babies. Now what we need to do is add some details with the airbrush. love airbrushing it does bring a piece from level 5 to a level 10 and I feel like it gives this organic kind of feel to it as opposed to just painting with an actual brush this airbrush from solar color dust is definitely one of my new favorites
Now that the airbrushing is done, all we have to do is glue on the extra bits. Here is Sniper Wolf's monster form. I don't know why I stuttered. English, we're, we're almost there. Stay with me. I absolutely love every single detail from the snake at the bottom to the pum, Meranian apples, and the shading on the grass. I really feel like the apples were the perfect item in there because not only are they symbolic, but at the same time, those who know, know exactly what they mean. I was really hesitant about adding the gold foil, but after seeing it on the actual sculpture, it adds an extra layer of dimension. All right, time to turn the lights off. Ermaker, that is absolutely amazing. I love the fact that it's really glowy. In case you're wondering why I went with the red on the back as the second theme, that's namely because of the thumbnail color that she uses as she's pretty known for, which is the red background behind her picture. So since it's used as an accent color in her thumbnails, why not use it for her creature self, right? right. Looking at the before and after painting, it is a huge difference. Trust me, the devil's in the details. You can see that it looked pretty plain and almost blah at the f at, at the first. Wow, English? I told you to cooperate! At the beginning is what I was trying to say. And with all the details, it's like... Not bad, Jackie. Not bad. Let me know in the comment section below which other YouTubers are you interested in me recreating as a monstrous creature. And please, please, please don't forget to tell Sniper Wolf in her latest video, Twitter, and Instagram, Nerdy Crafter turned you into a creature. This week's shoutouts go to Cat Loves Sans, Apple Siskit Sis, 66, six. wow, Steam Powered Kyo Pug, Lexi W, Bella Hudek, Nomen Gambatar, and Shenanigans2019. Remember, if you want a shout out, don't forget to hashtag Nerdification Squad in the comment section below within the first five hours of the video's release, or hashtag NerdyCrafter on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or TikTok anytime with any of your creations. If you want to watch the previous turning YouTubers into monsters, check it up up here, which is Mariah Elizabeth. And if you want to watch a salty review, check it out down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.